Now, if you find yourself seduced by the impressive portability and incredible battery life of a Chrome OS laptop, but you can't quite bring yourself to ditch Windows for the more restrictive Chrome OS, then one possible solution is the incomprehensibly skinny Galaxy Book S from Samsung. This right here is a fully fledged Windows laptop, but with one crucial difference. It's powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8CX platform rather than an Intel or AMD chipset. This is Qualcomm's most premium computing platform designed for more demanding users. Although that said, it is most definitely not up to more demanding creative tasks like video editing or gaming. So I've been using the Galaxy Book S as my full-time laptop for everything apart from video editing for over a week now to see if this super slim Samsung really is the ideal portable pal. And let me tell you, it took a few takes to get that super slim Samsung bit right. So here's my full Galaxy Book S review and for more on the latest greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now first up, yeah, they're in exactly much call for traveling about the place right at this moment. In fact, the furthest that I ever took the Samsung Galaxy Book S in the past fortnight or so was a sunny spot in the corner of my garden. It has to be said, 2020 is probably the worst possible time in history to launch an ultra portable laptop. But once life eventually stops being completely balls, and if you do happen to find yourself going off on business trips and things like that again, then you're going to absolutely love the design of this laptop. Every time I use the Galaxy Book, I feel like some kind of hench oversized beefcake because it's absolutely tea. It's so thin you could probably use it to chop spuds and it weighs a measly 960 grams so definitely ideal for carrying about all day. And despite the skinny finish, Samsung's all metal chassis certainly seems tough enough. There's only a little bit of flex when you apply pressure and that metal surface doesn't seem to scratch up at all either so quite happily you'll be able to chuck it in a rucksack or something without any kind of protective cover, no worries. That sleep design isn't quite perfect, however. The trackpad may be a decent size and pleasingly responsive, but I also found that the bottom left corner occasionally got a little bit stuck when I left clicked. And as usual with ultra portables, you do have to make a few sacrifices to get that really skinny build. For instance, the selection of ports is unsurprisingly limited to a pair of Type-C USBs, as well as a SIM and micro SD memory card slot and a headphone jack. So as far as connecting peripherals goes, where well, you can only have two at a time here on the Galaxy Book S, or just the one if you're charging the laptop at the same time, unless you spunk out a bit more cash for one of those adapters. Thankfully, the keyboard is a good size despite that compact form factor, complete with a double row enter key and arrow keys that aren't obnoxiously tiny. But of course, the travel is extremely shallow, which not everyone will enjoy. Personally, I found I adjusted to it pretty quick and managed to get up to a satisfactory touch typing speed in no time at all, although the overall experience isn't too dissimilar from typing on an iPad or a Microsoft Surface cover keyboard. There's obviously no satisfying mechanical click and next to no response. And while you do get three different levels of keyboard backlighting, all three of those levels are unsurprisingly weaker than a can of supermarket owned brand lager. Still, it is just about powerful enough to see what you're doing in the dark, while you also get all of the function shortcuts that you'd expect, so there is bugger all to complain about really. Plus that dinky power button also doubles as a surprisingly great fingerprint sensor, similar to Huawei's MateBook laptops. Although admittedly, fairly often I did accidentally hit that power key when I was actually aiming for the delete key, which is mildly irritating to say the least. Good thing then that it starts up again in a heartbeat. On the inside of that lid, you get a 13.3 inch TFT display framed by rather skinny bezels. And the good news is it's a touchscreen as well, so you can actually completely bypass that touchpad with its wonky corner if you like. And it's good news all around for media fans and creative users because that panel is definitely up to the job. The Full HD resolution keeps everything sharp while the colour reproduction is accurate enough for photo editing. 98% of the sRGB gamut and 75% of the Adobe RGB gamut are covered off. The colour temperature is close to ideal for daytime use, with the usual night filter on board to make things warmer in the evening. And that panel maxes out at 400 nits as well, which is perfectly adequate for working outdoors. I wrote this entire review while sat out there in my garden, basking in the sunshine, so job done. And the Samsung Galaxy Book S boasts some pretty beefy stereo speakers for something so slim as well. On top volume, audio comes through, certainly plenty powerful and nice and clear as well, so it's great if you're in a noisy kitchen trying to uh, watch a bit of Netflix or something while stirring up a casserole. And a 720p webcam is housed in that slender bezel just above the screen, which proves fine for Skype and Zoom calls. It's centrally positioned and it does a decent job of picking up your mug even in low light. But of course, one of the more unique features of the Samsung Samsung Galaxy Book S, which helps to set it apart from other ultra portables and other laptops in general, is that Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX platform, which replaces the traditional Intel 
Intel or AMD chipset and is backed by a healthy 8 gigs of RAM to help keep things moving smoothly. And this setup proves absolutely fine for working in Chrome, streaming media, photo editing and the like, although you will want to stop short of editing video or indulging in some proper gaming thanks to the basic integrated graphics. The Adreno 680 GPU can handle simple titles like point and click adventures, no worries, although a surprising number refuse to even load, let alone play well. But more recent or demanding games will have the Galaxy Book S right on its arse. Even the likes of Serious Sam 3, which is a game that came out over 8 years ago, was a proper struggle. That stuttery frame rate made about as much fun as playing Catch the Weasel by strapping a mouse to your todger. But in better news, at least the Galaxy Book S doesn't overheat to any kind of troublesome degree when you're putting it under duress, so you don't have to worry about it just completely collapsing. And for any benchmark fans out there, Geekbench 5 puked out a single core score of 682, which is beaten by the likes of the MacBook Air, although that multi-core score of 2670 is much more competitive. Good news if you want to juggle a few tasks at once. You've got around 200 gigs of free storage space to play around with on the Galaxy Book S when you first prize it out of its shiny wrapper, which ain't too bad again considering the size of this thing. Although it ain't the nippiest drive around, unfortunately, my test registered read scores of around 1 gigabyte per second and write of 462 megs. And for getting online, you've got standard Wi-Fi 5, and that worked fine for me media streaming out in the garden. But if at some point in a virus-free future you do happen to stray outside of any good Wi-Fi networks, then no worries at all, you can just slap a data sim in the Galaxy Book S and enjoy a nice bit of gigabit LTE support. And if you've got one of the more premium Samsung phones like the new S20s, you can also link to the Galaxy Book S using the Samsung DeX software. You can mirror your phone screen on the laptop or access your apps and files with a proper Windows style interface. So it's another way, for instance, of getting online on the Book S when you're away from good Wi-Fi. And it can also give you a bigger screen to work with for the likes of photo editing or just enjoying some video. But you do have to keep the laptop and the phone tethered together at all times using a USB cable which is going to be kind of awkward especially when you're traveling out and about and such forth. I definitely prefer the wireless solution that Huawei has for instance on its MateBooks and its new flagship P-series smartphones. But anyway, besides that super slim form factor, the main reason for getting a Snapdragon laptop these days is that crazy good battery life. And sure enough, the Galaxy Book S goes on for longer than a last of the summer wine marathon. You'll get about 10 full hours of working in Chrome while streaming music before the battery is fully depleted, much better than many other rivals. And the Book S takes just under two hours to recharge to full again. And so that is what I think of the Samsung Galaxy Book S. As you can see, if portability is definitely a priority, then it'll do the job although of course performance wise it is rather limited compared with a lot of other laptops especially around this sort of price point so you might want to shop around if you want to do some proper video editing, game, and a more creative tasks. And I would say that if you can live with working in the cloud and portability is a strong priority for you, then definitely check out Chrome OS because there are plenty of great Chromebooks out there for a fraction of the cost of this thing. So what do you reckon of Samsung Galaxy Book S? Have you been using it as your laptop? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell, do all the usual YouTube shenanigans, and have yourselves a lovely week, people. Cheers, everyone. Love you.